Hi everyone and welcome, James Tennant with you again today and today we're going to have a look at Autodesk PLM 360 and our topic is what is the difference between a participant user and a standard user. So I thought it might be a good idea just to demonstrate this so I'm going to log in as my username which is James T and when I'm in here uh, I'm an administrator of this site so when I go into here I can see administration, I've got roles and groups and all that sort of stuff which is good. The first thing I'm going to do is jump into the roles and groups and I can see I've got a couple of users of this site as well. So for example the user I'm logged in as right now is the James T user and you can see site owner. If I look at groups I can see I'm a member of the admin group and pretty much everything. There's a couple of groups over here that I'm not a member of, which I'm not really interested in right now. I could go and add all them if I wanted to, but for the purpose of the demonstration, it won't make any difference at all. Uh, the other user I'm going to be worrying about today is the participant user, which I've gone ahead and made. So one thing you will notice when you go to make a new user, you've got this drop down here where it says license type. You've got standard and you've got participant. So basically, uh, a lot of people have been asking me what's the difference between those two, and that's why I thought I'd do this demonstration. Most people will be a standard user. Um, there may be some participant users, but there'll be fewer, I'd imagine. Or there might actually be more. It depends on the way your company is structured. Back to the users, uh, you can see that just a little um, glyph here will show you what type of user we've got, and this participant user is. Uh, or called participant. So to demonstrate uh, this, I'm going to jump into just a test workspace that I've set up uh, called test change orders for the for the fun of it. You can see as James T, the standard user, I can go ahead and make new uh, change orders or anything in any workspace really. Change me, whatever you want to call it. Um, put in a couple of things in here just depending on the criteria and hit save. So as you can see so far I've been able to create, I've been able to edit so you can see the edit tools there, I can clone, I can delete and uh, and basically everything I can do in here as long as I've got permission to be able to do it in my roles. So um, that being said that's all well and good Let's jump back into my um, participant user just so I can show you what groups I've given this participant user access to. And you can see I've just added every group. And this is really bad practice, but it will, um, it will mean that there's no smoke and mirrors really going on. So you can see absolutely every group this participant user is a member of. So participant user is a member of every group. Now with that said, when I log out and log back in as the participant, after I'm logged in, I'll see the same workspaces, I'll see reports and tools which are the same, but you'll notice no administration over here. And, uh, and you're probably thinking, of course, but this participant user, remember, is actually a member of the admin groups and whatnot inside the roles and users. So theoretically, if this was a standard user, this person would have access to the administration tools. But because they're a participant user, they have no access to that, even though that their, um, their roles and groups say they should. Moving a little bit further along, if I jump down to that workspace we're playing around with. If I have a look in there, I can see all of me my um, change orders. I can see the one I created earlier. However, I don't have the little plus button there, so I can't go and make, make my own change orders. Let's have a look inside here. You can see I have no edit buttons. Clone, delete, and new are all gone as well, but I can pin it to my dashboard and see the links between um, any other items. Let's go over to my workflow however this is probably the difference um, so probably till this point you're probably thinking a participant user is a read-only user and you'd probably be pretty correct if you thought that however there is one little thing that a, a 
participant user can do, and that's basically participate in workflow. And that means that this user can go ahead and transition an item, assuming they've got permission to do that in the workflow itself. So I can go and hit the submit for review sort of thing, even as a participant user. So I think that demonstrates it pretty well. A normal user would have access to do pretty much anything. A participant user is a read-only user with some ability, with the ability to perform workflow actions. So that's, um, that's basically the difference between the two. If you have a series of people on the shop floor or whatever they are that need to view some of these items, then a participant user would work for them. And if they also just, you know, your management just want to be able to approve um, an item, for example, then that would work as well. So um, a lot of people would actually probably want their high-end management to be participant users and, um, and everyone else is standard because those high-end managers probably only want to just view something and approve it. So this is um, just a bit of a tip, I guess. Up to you. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, click the like button. Otherwise, subscribe. I'll keep uh, keep the videos coming, and um, and I'll see you next time.